there. Are we filming this already? We're going to put this back together, I think. <laughs> that should be an automatic choke, but I think the automatic choke's fed up. Get a manual choke put on it. I'll go up and see Mr. Manual. Mr. Manual put a manual choke on it. Oh, that's not hardly funny, is it? Here we go. Somebody made a lot of trouble to make this work. Okay, how do you want to start this? Do you want to start me whizzing out the shed on it? Or what's your plan? Okay, for kick ass. <laughs> not quite a, a fancy as most people's but somewhere you got to start somewhere i've had a rush of blood i was on the internet saw this little rocket machine advertised and i thought oh maybe i'll just go and have a look at it and i had a rush of blood and stuck it on the trailer and brought it home she's a little bit rhapsody's rule but hell it fits right in i reckon around here with all the madness oh heck well what a crazy little rig of course the next thing is, this creates me another dilemma. Now I've got to make some pallets to put the boxes on. Because you can't just lift up the bee boxes with this wild little rig. And I guess I'll have to make a trailer to put it on and put a tow bar on my truck. Oh, it just goes on and on, the madness. Still, it should be quicker, I hope. Oh, until it breaks down. Well, yeah, until it breaks down. But I might take it to the mechanics and get him to tune it. Maybe that'd be good. <laughs> Stay tuned for an episode where it breaks down in the middle of the night. Oh, Mr. Bloody Positive thinking he is. <laughs> I'm sure everybody will cheer and cheer me on. Send me, send me your positive thoughts that'll work. I don't know, the younger generation these days are over proud, I reckon. I'm just trying to explain that I didn't actually just pick up this wild June buggy and stick a fork on the front. Apparently this was an engineering father and son duo who happened to be beekeepers as well as engineers. And they slapped a few of these together for folk. I don't know whether this might be one of the last surviving ones, but hell, I'd be guaranteed that I'm not quite clever enough for this engineering feat of insanity. It's even got a side shift on the forklift, which is pretty cool. And it's hydrostatic drive, so you've got your little oil pump, oil motor, and then you've got your little forward and back pedal, so it's all hydraulic driven. So it's pretty snazzy. Whether, whether it survives my treatment, I don't know. But the real problem we've got right now is we've got to figure out how to make some pallets to sit the Jolly Bee boxes on so this thing can be useful. Oi, 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 oi. It never ends, there's always something. So I've been having a look on the internet for all the different options for pallets, my goodness me. Tell you what, there's not a lot of information, but the ones I thought were pretty cool are they're actually using the, a bit of um, particle board and they're creating a baseboard for their, pallet, for their bee boxes, but I'm thinking I've already got a heap of bee boxes that got their own bases, so I have to come up with my own idea. And I also, when I load them on the truck, I want the, the actual entrances to face away from the breeze and I don't want them sitting out towards the side of the truck. I don't really know. A bloke should have paid attention to all the other commercial beekeepers that have pallets. If you happen to have made some pallets and you're running a few thousand hives, just be gracious, I'm just starting out with this thing. And I reckon if I had a look in your backyard, you'd probably have a couple of failed attempts at pallet building, so... Let's go forward together and find out what the hell happened. And if you're not at this stage, well, hell, you can just have a laugh. Of course, it wouldn't be like me, but I'm trying to figure out how to use the resources that I happen to have at hand already. I've bought these jolly pieces of old red gum from a fella that was getting rid of his table grapes. So I'm hoping to make use of these. And so I've decided that what I want to do is I'm going to cut up some that are right, around about three of the fat ones at about 800. I'm going to cut up five of the other ones at about 120 and then I'm just going to screw them together and hopefully I'll get four pallets to sit on there and then I'll wrap a 
No, then you hive lock her and hold it all together, and then I don't know what happens if one dies. I'm not sure. Maybe let's we'll put some sticks in the corner. All right, so I've got two different sizes just to add to the excitement. I've got some that are a bit thinner and some that are a bit fatter. So I figure I might make these the 800s and those the 120s, but who knows really? But I reckon that'll work. Hopefully, we'll get a couple of lengths out of these. Being that these bits of jolly eight, these bits of red gum are probably older than me, so. Well, maybe not older than me, but they've been around a while. I think you could say they're happily seasoned. Oh, take them over here to me trusty saw bench. Shit! <laughs> oh, golly, I think I'm going to cut these up and take them home eventually, but we'll make one up here just to see if we can get it to work. You know, just trying to select where the best part of the poor unfortunate wood is. I'm just looking to see this end's looking a bit crap, so we'll cut that off. We've got to plug in the saw, that would be good. Ah oh, man, yeah. Honestly, yeah. She's a fancy workshop. <laughs> right. I just want to trim off this daggy end so we got some nice solid bits. <laughs> I went fossicking through my bloody glove box and I couldn't find a pencil or a pen, so I had to use a scraper instead. But that works quite well. You could zoom in and see that I've got a very nice mark on my bit of wood. I wonder if I'll get two. Oh yeah, good. Look at that, amazing. Me think amazing. I thought there was a bag once upon a time for this thing. Not that it has to be ridiculous precise anyway, goodness me. This has to be sort of precise. So what have we got? We need five at 120, I reckon. Maybe I'll make a couple and <laughs> put them on the truck and see what sort of mess that looks like. Going to be very wasteful but anyway oh well what else am i going to do with this wood anyway now what we need to do is find a flat surface to screw it together if you're following along at home feel free to do this on a bench okay just because i'm doing it on my knees in the dirt does not necessarily mean that's what you have to do but you could if you felt so inclined i'm trying to level the shit out <laughs> i'm making a i'm just trying to make a flat surface <laughs> That looks like a flattish surface there, surely. So we want three bits for the middle. Come on, you can do it, Duffy Boone. Maybe I can't pick up two at a time. In like that. I don't know how flat that really is, but anyway. Ah, oh. oh man. I don't know. I figure if we go like that. So I figure the bee boxes are gonna run this way. So we're gonna have two here and two there and a gap in the middle so they can fly out. But anyway, my, that's, the, that's my idea. <laughs> and hopefully the forklift will go underneath and pick them up. Oh, otherwise it'd be bloody fun trying to pick up four bee boxes by yourself, wouldn't it? I have enough trouble when it's just one. And for all the experts out there that want me to make a jig, send me yours if you've made one. Oh, does that sort of look square? Kind of, maybe. This is the moment when you hope you've cut your wood the right size, otherwise it sucks. Go cool. on, they're not. Oh, that'd be bloody right. Look at that. After all that effort, I ended up with a stupid hole anyway. Ah, oh, that'll be alright. Let's do this end first anyway, and we'll square it up. Oh, I got myself a pot of screws. I didn't know what are they called? Something, something crazy. Big kick-ass ones anyway. Whew. That ought to get you excited. Well, that was a bit poorly done. I've tried to screw this crap before without a pilot hole and they use this old dry redwood cracks so the wood drill was too jolly big for it so then nothing grips anywhere so then I ended up finding a little 10 mil long metal drill to drill wood which is not ideal yep. anyway if you take your time it does work but it's still not ideal it's obviously done, not going to stay sharp forever either 
So I just want to make a little pilot hole so hopefully we can screw the screw in without it all cracking everything. Oh no. Now <laughs> that'd be right. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking thing's gonna go flat. <laughs> now we have to use it have to keep changing everything. Ah yeah, Brussels sprout. Actually I probably could have screwed that one first, couldn't I? Because that's actually heel drilled anyway. If you're following along at home, this is why you're not meant to use a metal drill in hard wood. Because it goes ka and says thank you very much. Ma bum! Look at that! Shattered! <laughs> wow! Break me bloody wrist. Oh! Damn it. Oh! <laughs> I think we should see if we can pick it up. That would be a good start. See how good my eyes are. That'll be fun in the dark, won't it? I don't know. I'll have to put some more lights on this rig, I think. Um. Oh! Hopefully this rocket ship decides to start. It should. It's only been sitting here for a minute. Woohoo! That's the wrong lever. All right, plenty of gas. Whoa, what was that? Did it break something? That wasn't good. Then it didn't go sideways. Whoa, I don't know why it's doing a jump. That's not ideal. Probably needs some grease. I'm dreaming of not having to live any beehives by myself. Are you ready? Woo! <laughs> That'll do. Stop it. <laughs> the bees are still on there. <laughs> now, don't try that at home, boys and girls. I've got a sneaking suspicion that's going to be bloody quick across the sand hills if I'm not careful. I don't think you're supposed to ram it quite that hard, she's smoking a bit. <laughs> <sighs> Only 300 to go. I broke my drill. I broke my thing. I've done. I'm over. I'm exhausted. I've got my pocket knife that isn't really a pencil. What's yours saying? Pain's temporary films forever. I mean, you know, I know I'm on the internet forever, but... My watch says it's four o'clock and... I know technically as a beekeeper I should actually be getting to the bee site and loading up my hives and doing the move but I've got a bottle of Sav Blanc with my name on it but actually I haven't even got that because apparently I've got to go dance with my wife so I've got to get home to get washed to take her out dancing so I'm a jack of all trades and a master of none and lucky for me he's going to let me write this off so don't forget click like subscribe and let everybody know what a wonderful time you're having watching the bush bee man do donuts on his crazy little forklift. Now you're finished, click liking and subscribing. Go to the website and click on the join the brood box button and you get to have our show a week early and without any ads, which is pretty cool. And you're going to be able to join the monthly Q&A. And if you're really lucky, you might be able to interact with me as a questionnaire thing. It just depends how much crazy time I've got. And hell, anyway, that's a whole nother thing. We're going to give you some discounts in the shop. And John's let me make a hat, so it's really cool. I'm going to have a broad bin hat with little bee corks hanging on it 
and you might be able to get your hands on one of them. There are only going to be two available, one for me and one for whoever's lucky enough to get, get it on their head.